We now live in a world full of endless possibilities. Countless innovations by scientific minds across the planet all aim for humanity to flourish. So in the field of medicine, diseases known to man are either curable or incurable. Some of these diseases are associated with defective genes that are also known as genetic disorders. So in the past, we were not really capable of treating these disorders. However, through consistent research and a lot of sacrifices, we made the impossible happen because of genetic therapy. So genetic therapy focuses on developing long-lasting treatments for people with severe genetic disorders. So genes are basically segments of DNA that hold information for the cells within our body in producing specific proteins, providing a wide array of functions for the body to perform. Mutated genes cause genetic disorders that result in abnormal proteins or disabling the production of proteins specifically. So in gene therapy, it utilizes a functional copy of a gene where it has the potential in treating the disease, thus providing restoration and therapeutic benefits. As mentioned earlier, gene therapy involves the altering of genes inside your body cells to stop or to treat a disease. The benefits are, it holds promise for treating a wide range of diseases such as cancer, cystic fibrosis, heart diseases, diabetes, and hemophilia. It can wipe out genetic diseases before they even begin and eliminate suffering for future generations. Gene therapy is also a good technique for diseases that have not yet been researched. However, because gene therapy involves making changes to the body's set of basic instructions, it raises many unique ethical concerns. The ethical questions surrounding gene therapy include, how can good and bad uses of gene therapy be distinguished? Who decides which traits are normal and which constitute a disability or disorder? Will the high cost of gene therapy make it available only to the wealthy? Could the widespread use of gene therapy make society less accepting of people who are different? These are the questions lingering in the minds of the people that result in the divided opinions concerning gene therapy. There are different approaches on how researchers try gene therapy. First, they knock out the mutated genes that are not functioning properly. Second, they introduce new genes into the body to help fight the disease or replacing that mutated genes causing the disease with a healthy copy of that gene with the help of a virus. So although this technique seems uh, promising, the therapy remains risky as it is still under study to make sure it is safe and effective. So this is only being currently used on diseases or disorders that are incurable. So the big question is, what is its risks? First is the unwanted immune system reaction. So your body might recognize these viruses as intruders and attack them. So as a result, this can lead to inflammation or in severe cases, organ failure. Second is the possibility of targeting the wrong cells. Viruses can affect more than one type of cell, so it is possible that these altered viruses can damage your perfectly healthy cells, resulting to other illnesses or diseases like cancer. Lastly, the possibility of tumor formation. So if these new genes get inserted into the wrong spot in your DNA, the insertion may lead to more formations. In performing gene therapy, we use viruses as gene delivery vectors to deliver the new gene by infecting the cell. But before we proceed to the types of viruses used and how they cure diseases, here are two different ways that these vectors can be administered, and these are through in vivo and ex vivo. In vivo gene therapy means that Therapy is administered directly to the patient while the targeted cells remain in the body and this can be performed through injection or by IV. With ex vivo gene therapy, the targeted cells are being removed from the patient and gene therapy is administered to the cells through in vitro before they are returned to the patient's body. These viruses, as I have mentioned, cannot cause diseases when used in people because they are first modified by removing the original disease-causing genes and replacing them with the genes that are needed to 
stop the diseases. And as they are being delivered in the body, the newly engineered viruses protect the new gene they carry from the degrading enzymes within the blood. Some types of the viruses, such as retroviruses, which has been considered to be an ideal ve viral vector for gene therapy, um, integrate their genetic material into the new gene, or including the new gene rather, into the chromosome of the human cell. And other viruses, such as adenoviruses, introduce their DNA into the nucleus of the cell, but the DNA is not integrated into a chromosome. And an example of a disorder that these vector viruses treat is hemophilia, which is a rare disorder in which your blood does not clot normally because it lacks sufficient blood clotting proteins. So, um, gene therapy for this disorder involves using a modified virus to introduce a copy of the gene that encodes for the clotting factor that is missing in the patient's blood. And following this treatment, patients will begin producing their um, clotting factor normally. As of now, gene therapy is still undergoing development and experimentation. However, in the near future, it could prove to be a very useful procedure in the world of medicine. It is a very costly endeavor and only a small percentage of the population could afford it. But once a way has been discovered to make it affordable for the masses, it can revolutionize medicine forever. And previously, people with incurable diseases may now live their life without this deadly disease.